Good day everyone. I'm Anna Marie Baloran of BSBS Club. Our groups will discuss the module 3 of Discovering Computers 2018, Digital Technology, Data and Device. Computers and Mobile Devices Computer A computer is an electronic device operating under the control of instruction stored in its own memory that can accept data, process data according to specified rules, produce information, and store the information for future use. Ang computer ay isang electronic device na tumutulong sa atin upang makapag-retrieve, makapag-store, at makapag-process tayo ng mga data o informasyon. Mobile device A mobile device is a computing device small enough to hold in your hand. Sa mobile device naman, ito yung mga device na magagaan at maliliit na maaari mong madala sa iba't ibang lokasyon tulad ng smartphones, tablet, at laptop. Mobile computers and desktop A mobile computer It is a portable personal computer such as laptop, tablet, designed so that a user can carry it from place, whereas desktop is designed to be in a stationary location. Sa mobile computer, ito yung mga uri ng handheld device na idinisenyo upang madali lang madala ng mga user ang isang device sa anmang lugar. A personal computer. It is a mobile computer or desktop that can perform all of its input, processing output, and storage activities by itself and is intended to be used by one person at a time. Ang personal computer, ito ay isang multi-purpose computer na idinisenyo upang magamit ng isang solong end-user. Ito ay ginagamit sa mga negosyo upang maisagawa ang mga gawain tulad ng accounting at desktop publishing. Avoid malware infection. Some websites contain tempting offers to download free games and music. Install toolbars that offer convenience Enter contest and receive coupon on your computer and mobile devices. Ang mga sumusunod ay isang guidelines upang maiwasan na maka-encounter ng malware infection sa, is sa iyong mobile device o computer. Social media. Malware authors often focus on social media with the goal of stealing personal information such as password, profiles, contact list, and credit card details. Ang pinakamahusay na paraan upang maprotektahan ang iyong sarili ay maging maingat kapag nag-click ka sa mga link at gumamit ng maliit na tech savvy upang matiyak na mayroon kang pinakaligtas na karanasan sa pagbo-browse. Huwag gumamit ng isang simple password na madaling mahak at huwag iwanan ang iyong password na natigil sa isang post-it note sa iyong screen. Mas recommended na gumamit ng isang password na mahirap i-crack ng mga hackers para iwasan na makapasok ang isang malware sa iyong mobile device. Sa email, dapat i-save attachment ang iyong mga files sa computer para maskan ng software antivirus ang mga dokumento kung may kahinahinalang malware ba na nakapasok. Sa flash memory storage naman, iskan ang iyong USB flash drive bago mag-transfer at mag-open ng files sa isang computer. At laging linisan ang iyong flash drive through formatting. Pop-up windows Sa pop-up windows, kapag may napansin kayong warning sa iyong software, ang dapat mong gawin ay mag-install ng isang antivirus software to avoid malware infections. At laging i-update ang operating system at taasan ang sigurad siguridad ng iyong browser. Websites Para maiwasan ang malware infection sa websites, Gumamit ng mga tool para sa mga siguridad ng iyong website at huwag magtiwala sa mga pop-up window na nag-recommend sa iyo na mag-download ng software. Software. Sa software naman, ang dapat gawin upang ito ay maiwasan, dapat palaging i-update ang inyong computer at software directly sa manufacturer's websites. Smartphones. Malware creator are targeting smartphones, particularly those using the Android operator operating system. Sa smartphones, maaari mong gawin upang maprotektahan ang iyong cellphone mula sa malware 
ay mag-ingat tungkol sa kung saan mo kinukuha ang isang apps upang mag-download dahil karamihan sa mga programa ng malware ay particular na tinatarget ang mga gumagamit ng Android. Laptops, tablets, and other mobile devices. Laptop. Laptop is also called notebook computer. It's a thin, lightweight mobile computer with a screen and its lid and keyboard in its base. Designed to fit in your lap and for a easy transport, most laptops weigh up to 7 pounds can be as powerful as the average of desktop. One laptop have touch screens. Ang laptop ay isang ori ng computer or kagamitan na maaring dalhin kahit saan dahil maliit lang ito at maaring gamitin habang nakapatong sa hita. What punishment for webcam spying is appropriate? Microphones, digital cameras, and webcams have many practical and harmless uses. These technologies also can leave you open to spying. Cyber criminals can use spy tools that takes photos or record video or audio without turning on a light or other notification that indicates your camera or microphone is in use. Many state laws do not cover these types of acts. Massachusetts, however, passed a law that made secretly taking photos or videos that focused on people's private body parts. Tablets Tablet is usually smaller than a laptop, but larger than a phone. A tablet is a thin, lighter weight mobile computer that has a touch screen. And these are the two popular forms of tablets. The first one is slate tablet. It is a type of tablet that does not contain physical keyboard, which means you can, o you can only swipe and touch the screen. And the second one is convertible tablet. It is a tablet that has a screen in its lid and a keyboard in its base. And which means you can swipe and touch the screen and also you can type on the keyboards. Handheld computers. A handheld computer is a computer that can conveniently be stored in a pocket and used while you're holding it. This device is used for some employee that are working. And this is also called a personal digital assistance that can be divided into those that accept handwriting as input those with small keyboards. Stick computer. A stick computer or PC on a stick is a single board computer in a small elongated casing resembling a stick that can usually be plugged directly without an HDMI cable. A stick PC is a device which has independent CPUs, processing chips, and which does not rely on another computer. A stick PC is more bigger than a USB flash drive, and it has a limited storage than a USB flash drive. These are the mobile computers by a guide. Determine what mobile computer form factor fits your needs. Consider a mobile computer with a sufficiently large screen. Experiment the different keyboards and pointing devices. Consider a processor, memory, and storage upgrades at a time or purchase. The availability of built and imports and slots is important. Before buying a mobile computer, make sure that it has a good quality and a large memory and also has a storage upgrades. If you, you plan to use your mobile computer for a long time without access to any electrical outlet or if the battery life for the mobile computer you want to purchase is not sufficient, consider purchasing a secondary battery and purchase
purchase a well padded and well designed carrying case that is comfortable or ergonomic so that your mobile computer is more safe is more safer if you plan to connect your mobile computer to a video projector make sure the mobile computer is compatible with the video projector desktop and all in ones a desktop or desktop computer is a personal computer designed to be in a stationary location where all of its components fit under the desk table. A desktop have a system unit tower which made of metal or plastic. All in one computer. In the simplest term, it is a computer that combines all desktop components in one enclosed means instead of having a separate tower from the display monitor. Determine the specific software to use on the desktops. Know the system requirements of the operating system. Look for the bundle software. Avoid purchasing the least powerful desktop available. Consider upgrades to the keyboards, mouse, monitor, printer, microphone, and speakers. Because we always use the desktop, so there we need to update them to avoid problems. Consider a touch screen monitor. Evaluate all in ones, which may be less expensive than purchasing a tower and monitor separately. If you are buying a new desktop, you have several purchasing options. Be aware of addition cost. If you use your computer for business or require fast resolution of major computer problems, consider purchasing an extended warranty or service plan through a local dealer or third-party company. Servers A server is a computer dedicated to providing one more services to other computers or devices on the network. In many cases, a server access data, information, and programs on another server. Some servers, called dedicated servers, perform a specific service and can be placed with other dedicated servers to perform multiple services. Servers typically include a processor, memory, storage, and network connections. Depending on its function, a server may not require a monitor or an, any input device. These are the types of servers. The first one is rock server, sometimes called a rock mountain server. It is a server that is housed in a slot or a metal frame. The second one is blade server. It is a type of server in the form of a circle, circuit, board, or blade. The third one is tower server. It's a server built into an upgrade cabinet tower that stands alone. This is the types and its functions. The application server. It, it is stores and runs apps. The backup server. Backup server. Backup server, backup and restore file, folder, and media. Database ser server, stores and provides access to database. Domain name server, stores domain names and their corresponding IP addresses. File server, stores and manages files. FTP server, stores files for uses upload or download via FTP game server provides a central location for online gaming home server provides storage internet connections or other services to computers and devices in a household list server stores and manage email list 
mail server, stores and delivers email messages, network servers, manage network traffic, print server, manage printers and documents printed, web server, stores and delivers requests web page to a computer via browsers. Hi guys, I'm Kim Anthony Tan, the third reporter of Group 3. Terminal A terminal is a computer usually limited processing power that enables to send data to or receive an information from the server. Sa terminal, naka-input lahat ng gusto mong program sa na computer mo. So, dito na ipon lahat ng in-input mong program para sa computer mo. Point of Sale Terminals the location in a retail or grocery store where a consumer pays for goods or service in the point of sale should be say the POS. Dito, nakastak lahat ng data ng kanilang paninda upang malaman ng uri at presyo ng iyong pinamili. ATMs It's a self-service banking terminal that connects to a host computer through a network. Ang ATM ay or automated teller machine ay madalas nating makikita sa iba't ibang lugar ang ATM ang pinakamabilis sa paraan ng tao upang makapag-withdraw ng pera gamit ang ATM card. Madalas nating makita ang ATM machine na may keypad ngunit mas modern na ngayon ang touchscreen figures ATM machine. Nagagamit natin ang ATM machine kapag mag-withdraw tayo ng sahod or ipon. ATM safety Location, piliin ang ATM machine na malayas sa damuhan at sa mga sasakyan. ATM card and PIN, panatiling hawak maigi ang card at itago ang iyong PIN. Transaction, ilabas lamang ang, mga, ang ating ATM kapag tayo malapit na sa machine. Be suspicious of schemers. Lagi tayo maging masuri sa machine na gagamitin natin upang di tayo mabiktima ng schemers. Valuables, iwasan magsuot ng alas at na mahaling damit upang maiwasan ang masasamang loob. Exiting. Huwag magbilang ng pera sa labas o tapat ng ATM machine. Self-service kiosk. A pre-standing terminal that usually has a touch screen for user interaction. There are five types of self-service kiosk. Financial, photo, ticket, vending, and visitor. Financial kiosk dito na apaloob kung saan pwede tayo magbayad ng mga bills natin. Sa photo naman, di tayo pwede i-edit or i-print ng user ang mga picture na isinend natin or isasend natin. Ticket kiosk, it, ito ay kagaya ng isang resibo na gaya ng mga binili or banayaran mo. Vending kiosk, ito ay isang machine na pwede kang makabili ng pagkain at inumin. Sa visitor kiosk, Ito ay nagmamanage na kung saan malalaman natin ang pagpasok at paglabas ng mga located business. Supercomputers Supercomputers is the fastest, powerful, and expensive computer. Kaya mag-process ng madaming instruction sa loob lamang ng isang segundo. Ang bansang may pinakamadaming supercomputer ay ang China. Meron silang 226 nito. Hi hey ma'am, hi classmate. I'm Rasa Española from Group 3. So the topic that I'm going to report are cloud computing and mobile devices. So first is cloud computing. Cloud computing is the delivery of different services through the internet. These resources include tools and applications like data storage, servers, databases, networking, and software. So, bali po ang cloud computing, ito ay internet-based computing system, pwedeng application, software, databases, content, at iba pa pong na-access ng internet. Cloud computing refers to an environment that provides resources, services, access by the internet. In short po, hindi po natin siya ma-access pag wala tayong internet. Next one po is mobile devices. A mobile device is a computing device small enough to hold in your hand. So, bali po yung mobile devices, ito yung mga gadgets or devices na ginawa na sakto at maliit lang para madaling hawakan ng mga consumers. Kadalasan po sa mobile devices is nasa 3 to 5 inches lang. Isa sa mga sikat at kadalasan ginagamit ng tao ngayon are smartphones, digital cameras, 
portable and digital or media player, ebook reader, and wearable devices. So, isa po sa mga popular devices is smartphones. A smartphones is an internet-capable phone. Ang smartphones po, ang pinaka-usable and madaling gamitin is na rin ang smartphones sa so nakakatulong sa atin sa araw-araw, especially to us students po na nag-online class. Mapabad naman o yung matanda, may mga smartphones na rin. Ang laking tulong ng smartphones kasi meron na rin po siyang internet o tinatawag natin na data, calendar, address book, calculator, notepad, games browsers, and madami pang application ang pwede natin or install or i-download sa smartphone. Send and receive email messages and access the website via Wi-Fi or mobile data plan. So, sa smartphones po, pwede tayong makasend or makareceive ng email messages at maka-access ng mga websites gamit ang Wi-Fi or mobile data plan natin. Communicate wirelessly with other devices and computers. So, pwede po tayo maka-communicate sa mga devices or computers natin gamit yung smartphones natin wirelessly or, or mas mapapadali po. Function as portable media player. So, sa smartphones po natin, pwede tayo makanood ng movies, videos, makakinig ng music, ganon. Um, mas mapapadali po siya. Unlike po dati, kailangan pa ng DVD player or portable player para lang makanood ka ng movies and maka, makanood ka ng mga videos, makakinig ng music. Include one or more digital built-in cameras. So, yung mga smartphones po ngayon, ang dami na nilang cameras. Like po dito sa, smartphones na gam sa smartphone na gamit ko is Vivo. Meron po siyang four cameras. Um, isa po sa front cam, tatlo po dun sa back cam. GPS signals to determine a user's current location. Dito naman po, through smartphones, pwede po tayo makareceive ng GPS signals para malaman ng users yung current location natin. Synchronize data and information with a computer or another mobile devices. Ito po yung kung ano po yung nasa smartphones natin, pwede din po siya mapunta sa ibang smartphones. Support voice control so that you can speak instructions to the phone and speak responses back to you. One of the example of this po is si Google. Pwede po tayong makapag-command kay Google through voice. Kagaya po pag may i-research tayo, kay Google po tayong pwedeng mag-command at si Google na po yung bahala mag-research dito. Connect to external devices wirelessly such as via Bluetooth. Dito naman po, pwede natin gamitin ng Bluetooth para mak para kumonek wirelessly sa mga other external devices. Tap then next is serves as wireless access point. So sa mga devices or smartphones po natin ay nagsisilbing wireless access point natin. Next, talk directly into a smartphone's microphone or into a Bluetooth headset that wirelessly communicates with the phone. So dito po, pwede naman po tayo directly magsalita sa microphone ng smartphones natin or pwede din po tayong gumamit ng Bluetooth headset para po makakommunicate tayo sa other phones wirelessly. Conduct live video calls where the parties can see each other as they speak. Sa smartphones po natin, pwede tayong may... In install na application like Messenger or Facebook para po makapag live video calls para makausap at makita natin live yung mga kausap natin. Smartphones. Many smartphones have touch screens instead of or in addition to a screen keyboard. Dito naman po yung namalabas yung mga type ng smartphones or examples po ng smartphones. Nandito po yung mga old model na touch screens with additional screen keyboard Meron din po ng mga keyboard, meron na po yung may mga keyboard sa harap ng phone. At meron din po na pag yung slide mo yung phone sa likod ng phone, meron siyang keyboard. In last po is yung mga new model or yung meron ng mga keyboard sa mismong display niya, gagamitan na lang po natin ng fingertips para gumana. So one is messaging services. With messaging services or SMS means short message service, users can send and receive Short text mes message, typically fewer than 300 characters on a phone or other mobile devices or computer. 
sa messaging services naman po or SMS, ang mga users pwede makapag-send at makatanggap ng short text messages, typically mas kaunti pa po sa 300 characters sa mga smartphones or other mobile devices or computer. Ang text messaging service po, op may options yung users kung magsisend ba siya or mag -re receive ng messages or text messages. Mobile to mobile. Sa mobile to mobile po, pwede ka makapag-send ng message mula sa devices mo from another devices. Mobile to email. Sa mobile to email po, pwede ka makapag-send ng message mula sa device mo papunta sa kahit anong email address na gusto mong pag-sendan. One po is mobile to provider. Example po nito is yung magsisend po tayo ng specific na content sa provider. Kagaya po pag nagre-register tayo ng load. Example po, pag magre-register ka sa Globe, ite-text mo yung Globe ng, kunwari, Globe ng GoSurf, ganun po. Web to mobile, ito po yung pwede kang maka-access ng website gamit ang mobile devices. Pwede mong ma-receive ang mga messages or notif nila sa phone po nila. Picture and video, mobile to mobile, pwede kang makapag-send ng picture or video mula sa mobile device mo to another mobile device po. Mobile to email, pwede kang makapag-send ng picture or video galing sa devices mo at isend sa, sa kahit anong email address po na gusto mo. T-mobile device used in public areas. One common method of thwarting a smartphone theft is to avoid using the phone to check the time. So, ito po yung dapat pinakatatandaan natin. Iwasan po natin maglabas ng mobile devices sa public area gaya po ng Gaya po, example, kapag may nagtanong ng oras, wag na lang po natin pansinin dahil minsan po, style po nila yun na kapag po nagtanong sila ng oras, tas nilabas mo yung phone mo para i-check, yun na po yung ginagrab na po nila yung opportunity nila para ma-snatch po nila sa inyo or makuha po nila sa inyo yung mobile devices nyo or smartphones nyo. Hello guys, my name is Chris and now we will talk about digital camera. So let's get start. So what is digital camera? A digital camera is a mobile device that allows user to take photos and store the photograph image digitally. A smart digital camera also can communicate wirelessly with other devices and can include apps similar to those on a smartphone digital. So next, how a digital camera might work? Step 1. Point the image to photograph and take the photo. Light passes into the lens of the camera. Step 2. The image is focused on a chip called a charged couple device or CCD. Step 3. The CCD generates an analog signal that presents the image. Step 4. The analog signal is converted to a digital signal by an analog to digital converter or ADC Step 5 a profe, The processor in the camera adjusts the quality of the image and usually store the, digit, the digital photo on media inserted in the camera Next So next is the photo quality So what is photo quality? Resolution affect the quality of digital camera photo resolution is the number of horizontal and vertical pixels in a display a pixel is the smallest element in an, in an electronic image so the next one is portable and digital media player so a portable media player is a mobile device on which you can store organize and play or view digital media Portable media players enable you to listen to music, view photo, watch videos, movies, and television shows, and even record audio and video. A television media player or streaming media player is a device typically used in a home that streams digital media from a computer or network to a television, projector, or some other entertainment device. The next one is we will focusing mobile device buyer's guide. 
So, the first one is choose a mobile service, provide and plan the satisfy your need and budgets. Choose a sufficient voice, text, and data plan that is appropriate. The second, decide on the size, style, and weight of the smartphone that will work best for you. The third, determine whether you prefer on a screen keyboard, keypad, or mini keyboard. The fourth, select a smartphone that is compatible with the program you want to use. The fourth, and the fifth, choose a smartphone with sufficient battery life that meets your lifestyle. The sixth, make sure your smartphone has enough memory and storage for contacts, email, message, photo, videos, and apps. Then the last, consider purchasing accessories such as extra batteries, earbuds, screen protectors, and carrying cases. So next is digital camera purchase guidelines. First, determine the types of digital camera that meets your needs such as a point and shoot camera or SLR camera. Second, choose a camera with an appropriate resolution, evaluate memory cards. Fourth, consider a camera with a built-in photo e editing features then the fifth make sure that you can see the screen easily the sixth choose a camera with an appropriate optical zoom then purchase accessories as extra batteries and battery chargers the next one is portable or digital media player purchase guidelines so first choose a device with sufficient storage second Consider how the portable or digital player will connect to internet. Third, review, read views and about sound quality. Then the fourth, select a player that is compatible with other devices you already, already own. The fifth, consider, consider additional memory cards to increase the storage capacity. The fifth, consider the accessories. Next is ebook readers. So what is ebook readers? An ebook reader, an ebook or a e-reader is a mobile device that is used primarily for reading ebooks and other digital publications. Digital publications include books, news, newspaper, and magazines. So the last is about wearable device. So what is wearable device? This device often communicate with a mobile device or computer using Bluetooth. Three popular types of wearable device are activity tracker, smartwatch, and smart glasses. The first one is activity tracker. This device can monitor fitness related activities such as distance, walk, heart rate, pulse, calories, and sleep pattern. Second is smartwatch. In addition to keep time, to keeping time, can communicate wirelessly with smartphones to make and answer phone calls. Then the last, smart glass. This device enable to user user to view information or take photos and video. Good day everyone. My name is Aaron Ciroldam from BSDS Web. I will discussing you game devices. A game console is a mobile computing device designed for a single platter or multiplayer video games. Like for example, means any equipment or mechanical electronic contrivance, components or machine used remotely or directly in connection with gaming or any game which affect the result of fogger by determining win or lose. Handheld devices is a small device that contains a screen, speakers, controls, and game console in all one unit like for example nintendo switch br or virtual reality xbox psp or playstation type of game controllers gamepad is held with both hands controls and movement and action of a player like for example held in two hands where the fingers especially thumbs are used to provide input especially in 
Mobile Legends, Call of Duty, and Rules of Survival. Joystick, handheld vertical lever that you move in different directions to control the actions of the simulated game. A level that can be moved in a several directions to control the movement of an image on in computer. A joystick, it can be used in flight simulator. Pedals and wheel, input device that user turn to simulate driving car, truck, or other vehicle. For example, dirt rally and bus simulator. Dance pad, electronic devices divided into panels that users press with their feet in response to instruction from music video games. Also known as a dance mat or dance platform is a flat electronic game control used for input in dance games. Motion sensing game controller, guide on screen elements with air gestures that is by moving their body or a handheld device. Also known is a term applied to all video games in which players use live movements to control characters or objects in the game. Embedded computers, consumers electronic, mobile phones, digital phones, digital television, cameras, video records, DVD players, and recorders, answering machine. Home automatic devices, thermostats, sprinkle system, security system, vacuum system, appliance, and light. Automobiles, anti-lock brakes, engine control modules, electronic stability control, airbag control unit, control navigation system, and GPS receiver, process controllers and robotics, remote monitoring system, powers monitoring, machine controllers, medical device, computer device and office machines, keyboard, printers, fax, and copy machines. Good afternoon ma'am, good afternoon classmates. So this is the part of my report. Putting it all together. Uh, industry expert typically classify computers and mobile devices in six categories. Personal computers, mobile de computer, mobile devices, game console, server supercomputers, and embedded computers. A computer size, speed, processing power, and price determine the categories it best gets. So, dito po, is malalaman natin yung, ano niya, sa part na to, yung category, physical size, number of simu simultaneously connected to users, and general, general price range niya. So, number one, personal computers or desktops, fits on desk, and usually one can be more if network, and general price niya is several hundred to several thousand dollars. Next is mobile computers and mobile devices, physical size niya is fits on your lap or in your hand, and Number of simu simultaneously is usually one. General price range niya uh, less than a hundred dollars to several thousand dollars. Game consoles is physical size niya is small box or handheld device. One number of simultaneously niya is one to several, and price range niya is several hundred dollars or less and servers uh, physical size is small cabinet to room full of equipment and number of simultaneously niya is two to thousands and price range niya is several hundred to several million dollars so and next is supercomputers full room equipment hundred Two thousands and price range niya is half a million, several billion dollars. So next naman is itong embedded computers and physical size is miniature and number of simultaneous linya is usually one and price range niya is embedded in the price of the product. So next, force and connection. A port is the point at which a peripheral device, example keyboard, printer, monitor, attaches to our 
to or communicates with a computer or mobile device. So that the peripheral device can send data to or receive information from the computer or mobile device. So, ito po yung mga example ng port. So, kung makikita nyo, itong kulay blue na to is for VGA port siya. And ito naman ang kulay yellow is for S-video. For video in or out. And HDMI. Ito po yung example ng ano nya. Ports. Connection nya. Ito. And digital video. So, sa kabila, next, is ito pa po yung ibang example ng mga ports and connection. Ah, uh, Ethernet, HDMI, micro USB. So, ito naman yung kulay pink is for microphone. And yan, yung mga type na kung saan nyo pwede, ano. Yan is for headphone. And the next, USB port. So, USB port, short for universal serial bus port. So, pwede siyang can connect to 127 different different peripheral devices together with a sing with a single connector. So, yun uh, ang USB USB ports ay isa siyang karaniwang interface na connection ng cable para sa mga personal na computer at aparato ng electronics ng consumer natin. So, isa din siyang pamantayan sa industriya para sa mga maikling komunikasyon sa digital na data. So, dito rin sa USB ports is pinapayagan, pinapayagan ng mga USB devices na kumonekta sa bawat isa at ilipat ang mga digital na data sa mga USB cable. So, next. public USB charging station safe or not so number one the station may be used jacking which of course when a hacker steals data from or transfer malware to the device via a uh, sub cable at a charging station to be safe of use jacking by taking these precautions number two Use a travel travel charger, also called a power bank. So, kapag alis tayo ng bahay or pupakat tayo ng mga bundo, simply, di wala naman tayo don magkakamping tayo, wala naman tayo ng mga ano, magagamit na or masasaksakan na para i-charge yung cellphone natin. So, meron tayong tinatawag na ano na travel charger which is a power bank na kung saan pwede natin kapag naloba tayo ang ba sa camping time naloba tayo is pwede natin siyang i-charge so keep mobile device locked so that it requires a password to sync data with another device so yun la cellphone na ang mga ano natin is kailangan may password kasi kung may mga malag kung halimbawa nawala yung cellphone natin is hindi basta-basta mabubuksan or oo, hindi basta-basta mabubuksan ng nakakuha o nakanakaw sa'yo. So, yun. Use a power only USB cable that does not allow data transmission. Port replicators and docking stations. A port replicators is an external device that provide connection to peripheral device through ports. Then, yung docking station naman, which is an external device that attaches to a mobile computer or device, contains a power connection and provides connection to peripheral devices. So, yung docking station is, sa pamamagitan ng docking station, is pwede tayong gumamit ng isang nakakonektang monitor, printer, keyboard at mouse sa laptop at paganaan ito na parang isang desktop computer. Dahil dito, uh, dahil sa docking station is mananasan natin yung isang parang desktop computer sa laptop natin. So, wireless device connection. 
instead of connecting computers and mobile devices to peripheral devices with a cable, some peripheral devices use wireless communication technologies such as Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and NFC. So, dito naman is, in, hindi lang tayo makakakonekta sa mga computers or mobile device na na may cable. So, pwede din tayong kumonekta na through wireless communication gamit yung Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, or NFC. So, Bluetooth. What is, ano nga ba itong Bluetooth? Technology use short-range radio signal to transmit data between two Bluetooth enables computer or devices. So, sabi dito, sabi dito pwede tayong maka maka ano siya, isa siyang app na kung saan pwede natin gamitin at ikonekta sa parehas na nakabukas yung bluetooth at magsend tayo ng mga data so wifi short for wireless fidelity ano naman to uh, sya naman is wireless, wireless network na gumagana bilang local area network uh, nag sya din is nag papadala ng mga signal sa pamamagitan ng device sa tulong na din ng radio signal. So, NFC Near Field Communication use, uses close range radio signals to transmit data between two NFC enabled devices. So, ano naman tong NFC? So, example ng NFC magbibigyan na lang ako ng example. Uh, example is na grocery tayo so wala tayong dalang ano, wala tayong dalang ano tayong dito wala tayong dalang cash na pera, na pambayad so pwede tayong magbayad sa pinamilya natin na tumatanggap ng online payment ganun yun, ganun yung, dito pumapasok yung near field communication, kumbaga Pwede tayong, yung, kumbaga, yung near field com communication is isa siya, isang example yung pagbabayad through online. So, next. Pair Bluetooth device. Uh, the following step will help you to pair two Bluetooth device. So, this is the, ito yung guide kung paano tayo makakapair sa isa pang Bluetooth na pag ano natin so number one, make sure the device you int intend to pair are charged completely so number two is turn on the devices to pair ensuring they are within your immediate reach if necessary enable bluetooth on the device you are pairing Next, place on device in discoverable mode, which means it is waiting for another Bluetooth device to locate its signal. And last is, refer to the uh, order, other device docu documentation, and follow the necessary step to locate the discoverable device from the other device you are carrying. And after no more than about 30 seconds, the device should initiate communication. You may be required to enter passkey or similar to a pin on one device for the other device with which you are pairing. After entering the correct pass, the two devices should be paired successfully. Next is connect your phone to a Wi-Fi network to save data charges. The following step will help you to connect your phone to a Wi-Fi network. Make sure you are in location where a Wi-Fi network is available. So now is navigate to the setting on your phone. So in navigate natin sa setting sa ating cellphone, uh, locate and enable Wi-Fi in your phone settings. So yon. When your phone displays a list of available wireless network choose the network which to which you want to connect if necessary 
enter any additional information such, such as a uh, password required to connect to the network. Your phone should indicate when it successfully is connected to the network. When you are finished using the Wi-Fi connection or uh, not within range of the Wi-Fi network, dis disable Wi-Fi on your phone to help conserve battery life. So that's all my report, ma'am. Hello everyone, my name is Pauline Cervantes, the last reporter of Group 3 and I'm able to discuss about protecting hardware and many more. Protecting hardware. Users rely on computers and mobile devices to create, store, and manage important information. Protecting hardware. Hardware security or protecting hardware is very important because it prolongs the life to be used for longer amount of time. Primary examples are Regular maintenance, dust and smoke-free environment, and also air condition. Hardware, theft and vandalism, companies, school, and other organizations that house me computers are at a risk of hardware theft and vandalism. The hardware theft is the act of stealing computer equipment at pwedeng manakaw sa isang PC, katulad ng CPU, RAM, hard disk, and etc. Na kasya sa isang backpack or briefcase na kadalasan nag-i-exist ito sa mga malalaking kumpanya or paaralan. Although they are a risk of theft and vandalism, it can be prevented by the use of a variety of security measures, supervision by adults, security cameras, signs, and that are possible people that have different motives. Hardware failure. Hardware can fail for a variety of reasons. Aging hardware, random events such as electrical power problems, and even errors in programs or apps. A hardware failure is a common problem for average PC user. It can be quite troublesome for people who doesn't know how to fix it. And in case of it happening, it is better to make a backup copy to your important file so the damage wasn't secured. Under voltage occurs when the electrical supply or voltage drops of 10 defined as more than 5% below the normal volt. Ang under voltage ay tinutukoy din bilang pagbigsak ng kuryente na nangyayari kapag ang average voltage ng isa sa tatlong yugto na sistema ng kuryente ay Bumababa sa nilaan nitong antas. Brownout is a prolonged more than a minute under voltage. Blackout is a complete power failure. Over voltage or power surge. When the incoming electrical supply or voltage increases, of often defined as more than 5% above the normal volts. A voltage that exceeds the regular voltage na nagpapatakbo ng machine or circuits exists a fractable required for IO and discharge from the electrodes. Spike is a momentary voltage. Surge protector. To protect against electrical power variation, use a surge protector. A surge protector ay nagbibigay ng protection mula sa kasulukuyang mga pabago-bago na bumababa sa inyong linya ng kuryente. Here, here a thing na maaari mong gawin kapag nagkaroon ka na ng surge protector upang mapanatiling digtas sa paggamit nito. Huwag kailanman gumamit ng power strips or surge protector for high power capacity tulad ng isang space heater o iba pang mga appliances na may mataas na kapasidad. Uninterrupted power supply is a device that contains surge protection, circuits, and one or more batteries. Isang device na ginagamit upang ibaka pang isang supply ng kuryente upang maiwasan na ang mga devices or system mula sa problema sa supply ng kuryente. Evaluate earbuds and headphones. Earbuds and headphones are used to listen and other audio files on computers and mobile device. Determine which style you prefer 
earbuds rest inside your ear while headphones rest over your ear so i prefer earbuds rather than headphones determine the quality you desire the first thing that you may need to consider is the good quality the next is comfort good earbuds headphones don't only sound good they should be comfortable decide whether you would like a noise cancelling feature a noise cancelling feature would be better if you wish to protect your hearing reduce environmental distractions and enjoy a better audio experience determine whether you prefer wire or wireless headphones Wireless headphones are generally more compact, more affordable, and more workout friendly, especially the lack of wires. Provides better range of motion. Connectivity to a variety of devices and the latest wireless headphones have a great range and battery life. Health concerns of using technology. This is a healthy reminder for us. Siyempre, nowadays, more on technologies na ang hawak ng mga tao ngayon. So, health concerns means to be overtired sa paggamit ng gadgets or other technology. Therefore, let's talk about a cause and effect of too much using technology in our health and how to minimize the risk as well. Repetitive strain injuries or RSI tendonitis and carpal tunnel syndrome or CTS. What can you do to prevent technology related tendonitis or CTS? Take frequent breaks to exercise your hands and arms. So, anong purpose bakit kailangan mag-exercise ng kamay at braso? Siyempre to give strength or boost our stamina para hindi masyadong mangalay yung kamay at braso natin. As much as possible, after mo pagkagising sa umaga, gawin mo muna or hindi kaya after mo gumamit ng computer or anything else, pwede naman. Yes, one of the reason kung bakit nagkakaroon tayo ng risk sa kamay at braso, it's because after gumamit ng gadgets, ilalagay yung kamay or isasandal yung kamay sa death. This is a wrong way para i-minimize yung mga risk. Place your mouse at least 6 inches from the edge of the desk. So workplace, usually if you can see sa mga office workers, medyo malayo yung keyboard sa mouse. This is a good way to avoid the any kind of pain sa wrist natin. Minimize the number of times you switch between the mouse and the keyboards. As a taking computer programming, dapat we must to learn how to use a shortcut keys sa mga keyboard para mabawasan yung mga risk by switching sa mouse at keyboard. Keep your forearms and wrist level so that your wrist do not bend. Dapat yung forearms natin or braso at yung pulsa natin sa kamay is level lang para hindi magbend or mangalay habang gumagamit tayo ng computer. Avoid using the heel of your hand as a pivot point while typing or using the mouse. Iwasan yung paggamit ng heel pad sa ating kamay every time na gumagamit tayo ng mouse dahil nagkukos ito ng wrist sa ating pala. Keep your shoulders, arms, hands, and wrists relaxed while you work. If may work na tayo, Dapat sa workplace natin, marirelax yung mga parts natin sa katawan habang nagtatrabaho para ma-avoid yung mga pain at yung risk. Maintain good posture. Ano ibig sabihin nito? This is also important to know how to posture properly in order to any kind of situation. Huwag tayo laging nakabend kasi possible na makuba tayo. Dapat always straight body sa trabaho man yan or sa online class. Dapat as much as you can, keep do it. Stop working if you experience pain or fatigue. Stop doing or dealing kapag nakakaramdam na tayo ng pananakit sa ating katawan. If ever man na makaramdam ng ganyan, mas babuti na mag-search how to prevent the pain and fatigue. Para maging knowledgeable tayo pagdating sa ganyang sitwasyon. Computer vision syndrome or CBS, you may have CBS is you have sore, tired, burning, itching, or dry eye. 
These are the symptoms of CBS. So, bakit nagkakaroon na isang tao ng CBS? Siguro sa masyado na expose yung mata natin sa computer or hindi lang sa computer. Hindi rin sa cellphone or whatever pang gadgets na possible dito na lumalabas yung tired, sore, burning, itching, or dry eyes by exposing the computers. And then to avoid that, these are a techniques or tips to prevent the computer vision syndrome or CBS. Every 10 to 15 minutes, take an eye break. Ibig sabihin nito, after gumamit ng computer or any devices, take a break or ipahinga yung eyes natin within 10 to 15 minutes. Look into the distance and focus on an object for 20 or 30 seconds. Sa na mga bagay na pwede mong pagtuunan ng pansin para maiwasan yung pag-focus sa computer. Kahit mga 20 or 30 seconds or mas okay kung mas matagal. Roll your eyes in complete circle. Ibig sabihin na ito, i-roll nat i-roll mo yung eyes mo into circle motion. I think ang purpose nito is to stop experiencing the double vision sa ating mata. Close your eyes and rest them for at least one minute. At least one minute, ipikit mo yung mga mata mo upang makapagpahin siya. Isipin mo, tao din siya, nagpapagod din. Kaya, kailangan gawin. Blink your eyes 5 seconds. Every 5 seconds, dapat i ikurap natin yung mga mata natin para hindi ma-expose sa device. Minsan kasi hindi na natin namamalayan, hindi na tayo kumukurap. Kasi nakapokus na mga mata natin sa computer. Is your display about an arm's length away from your eyes with the top of the screen at below the eye level? So, dapat yung distance ng computer sa'yo is at least one fully extended arm length. Then, yung viewing angle mo is above the screen into eye level. Use large fonts. Mas okay, mas madali makita sa screen kapag malaki yung font size na gagamitin natin. If you wear glasses, as your doctor about computer glasses, kung may suot kang salamin, itanong mo muna sa doktor kung anong pwedeng salamin for computer purposes para maging suit sa'yo habang gumagamit ng computer. Adjust the lightning. Don't use over lightning or too much low kasi take tayo ng risk dito. Mas maganda kung sakto lang yung brightness. Viral health risk. Some technology users become obsessed with computers, mobile devices, and the internet. I agree with that. Kasi sa panahon ngayon, high technologies na meron ang mundo, some of us na nahuhumaling or na adik sa paggamit ng technology. Kasi sa mga kabataan ngayon na maling paggamit natin sa mga technology, hindi natin napapansin nagkakaroon na tayo ng problema sa social life. People suffering from technology overload feel distressed when they're afraid of technology. To avoid suffering and feeling emotional distress by using technology, people should know how to proper use of device and necessarily as much as needed with moderation. That's all. Thank you.